to me, speaks more about God's grace, more about his just unbelievable love for us, more about his, his plan for us, and more about how he sees us even when we're feeling the ugliest, and even when we're feeling the most like an outcast. There's no other story, or it's hard for me to find a story in Scripture that speaks more about his love for us than the story of the Metzora. And the Hebrew word Metzora is the leper. And we read about the leper, as Stephanie was sharing, in this week's Torah portion. We all kind of know about leprosy, those who have been in the body of Messiah and accepted Yeshua long ago or whatever, when we were more familiar with the New Testament than we are with the Torah, for those, those of you that are like that are familiar with the leper. Because Yeshua healed a leper. So we know that. We know the story when Yeshua healed a leper. But if you don't understand the Torah foundation of the leper, the Metzorah, and the biblical and Hebrew understanding of what what is that and what that means, you only have a partial revelation of actually what Yeshua did. So I'm going to explain what the Mitzorah, the leper, actually is. The leper is an absolute scum outcast. I mean the lowest of the low. The most unwanted, unloved. It is the epitome of the one who nobody wants to be around who is completely considered unclean by everybody and is just, uh, just, just an outcast of society. He is sick and people view him as contagious. Now mind you, there are, I'm sure there were many contagious diseases in the time of the scriptures. People have probably had the mumps and the measles and the flu and the pneumonia and all these types of things. There's, there's something about this leprosy where people are like, In Jesus' name, get away. Back! Back! This was the absolute scum of the earth, viewed as scum of the earth, outcast of society. It's like, it's kind of like how we viewed AIDS victims years ago. Okay? Like before we totally understood AIDS, like it was, number one, it was a, it was a contagious disease. We didn't know how we were going to get it, or if we can get it. And it was related with simple activity. So, like, that was a double whammy. Right? And it's like, okay, it's, it's like <clears throat> Ebola. Like, can you imagine, like, if somebody, like, had Ebola and was walking down the street? Right? Like, how would we view that person who had Ebola? We'd be, like, running for our lives. How dare he even be allowed to be around us? Right? And we would be... You know, back on, whoa, what we mean? Running out of town, running out of Dodge. That is the leper. Unwanted. In fact, in Torah, it explicitly tells the leper he has to leave the camp, live alone, live away from men. And if he's ever around people, he's got to announce himself. Okay? By going, by covering his lip. Read it in the Torah portion. And screaming out, Unclean! Unclean! Now that's such an odd thing. There are many things in the Torah that can make you ritually unclean. Back then in the tabernacle system where the tabernacle was all clean, you know, back then you had to be a certain ritual unclean and God put these things in. Simple things that can make you unclean. If a woman has a menstrual cycle, she becomes unclean <coughs> temporarily. You eat a pork chop, you become unclean until evening. You have any sort of emission, you become unclean until evening. There's lots of things that could have made you unclean back then. You didn't have to go screaming out, unclean, unclean. And no matter what your uncleanliness is, like if you're unclean, you touch, you know, the person who touches you then becomes unclean <laughs> until evening. It's not sin, okay? There's a difference between the unclean and, un clean and unclean in the scripture and sin. It's not sin. It's just something that God set up to, like a, a ritual thing. So you'd be in a clean state when you approach God in the tabernacle and gave an offering. And there's many things that can just make you unclean just throughout life. It's not a sin. But the only one 
where you gotta scream out to everybody that you're unclean, unannounced. It's like Megan's Law. Okay? Like, and I get that. You know, I totally understand that. But like, you know, you, you commit this horrible sin, and now you're marked. You know? And I get it, and I understand it. But spiritually, it's like against what Adonai, how Adonai handles us when we're forgiven. Because when we're forgiving, it's, it's forgiven it's as far as the east is from the west. But it's the same thing with this leper. Like, he's got to announce it. You know, like the one with the Megan's Law. Like, they move into a town, they got to register, okay, sex offender. You know what I mean? So it is with this leper. Nobody wanted to be around him. I mean, just the scum of the earth, viewed as scum of the earth, viewed as sick and sinful. So why is the leper viewed as sinful? That all started with Moses' sister Miriam. When she kind of went over to Aaron and sidled up next to him and said, what is Moses doing marrying this chick for? And then God came down and said, you know who you're talking about? Do you know who you're talking about? And she became leprous for a week. And since then, the children of Israel and Judaism has viewed leprosy with like God striking like a punishment because of a sin. So that was the mindset of around lepers. Sick and sinful. And stricken by God. And nobody wanted to be around these people. In comes Yeshua. In comes Yeshua. Who? I always visualize it this way. I've said it here before. I visualize it this way. Yeshua was in Israel. And he was around all these holy people. He was around the Pharisees. And the Pharisees, they, they got it all right. They're davening. Baruch atah, deny, Elohim, Melech, Olam, Masher, Kitshah, the Mesotav, and Zivana. They probably wrote a lot of the liturgy that we sing. Besham, Rum, B'nei Yisrael. All this holiness. And Yeshua is unimpressed. Right? He's like sitting there playing jacks. Right? They're like, Baruch atah, deny, Baruch atah, Meshem, Adonai. Yeshua's like, you know, he's like, unimpressed. Unimpressed. On the other side, you have the Sadducees, and they're, they're you know, you know, and then they're <laughs> sacrificing animals, and all this holiness going on. Everybody's ooing and eyeing all this stuff that's going on, and then, you know, and, but Yeshua is unimpressed. <laughs> He's not moved by that. All of a sudden, he hears in the distance, unclean, unclean. The same words, the words that are meant for people to hear and say, I got to stay away. You're unclean. I got to stay away. Thank you. I don't want to ruin my state of cleanliness cause so I can go make my sacrifice. Thanks a lot, pal, for letting me know. Everybody's going away from this scumbag. Except Yeshua, who bypasses all of the Baruch Hatas, unaffected by it, goes past the temple with all the sacrifices, unaffected. Unaffected. <laughs> bypasses all of them, goes through the crowd, unclean, unclean. He hears that, and he's drawn to it. And then he does something rap when he's finally face to face with this leper. The one who is clean. The one who is in the tabernacle. We're in this tabernacle system. The unclean were not allowed to approach at that time. He is the one. He is the glory in that tabernacle. He's the glory that fell in the Mishkan in the wilderness. He is. That one comes out of the place of cleanliness, comes to the leper, and he's the one who wrote, if you touch a leper, you become unclean. He's the one who wrote it. Yeshua touches the leper. And what does he do to the leper? He, what to the leper? He, it doesn't say you. He did. It says he made him clean. 
And that explicitly points to the Torah clean, unclean paradigm at that point. When you had to be ritually clean to approach, then he starts a new thing where the one who is clean goes and touches. There is a lot of debate in Messianic Judaism these days. Remember last week we spoke about the counting of the Omer and when it starts and all the different possibilities of how that is, right? Remember we spoke about Torah and, do you remember? Halakha, right? Halakha, akalakha. Mecca, lecca, hi, mecca, hi, ho. Halakha. There's the Torah, and then how you implement the Torah. Same thing with the kosher things. I can't tell you the debates that happened in Messianic Judaism. Are you allowed to keep kosher? Are you not allowed to keep kosher? Are you, what are the things that made you unclean then? Do they make you unclean now? I am not even going to go there. Whatever you do, whatever you eat, do it unto the Lord. Do it unto the Lord. But Yeshua went to a one who made you unclean, screamed out his uncleanliness, and touched that person, and made him, doesn't say healed, clean. Yeshua, to this day, to this day, wants to touch lepers. Yeshua, to this day, wants to touch lepers. He wants to touch lepers. The ones in society that are the scumbags of today. The church, the body of Messiah these days are doing exactly what the Pharisees did back then. Exactly. And the body of Messiah can come under judgment for dealing with people like the Pharisees did. And not as the kingdom deals with people. Which is to go right into a place of uncleanliness and touch and heal. Today, Yeshua is looking to touch lepers. He changes the paradigm for how we deal with things that are ritually unclean. He goes right to it, bypasses all the holiness, and touches. That's what he does today. He's walking around town, woman with an issue of blood for whatever it was, 20 years, unclean. Unclean. Do you know what it means to be unclean? It means, like I said, you cannot go to offer a sacrifice to God. That's what unclean meant. This leper was not able to go into the system of the day and offer a sacrifice, offer a worship and a praise from, from sacrifice. He was not able to do it because of his state. What Yeshua did by cleansing him, he enabled him to be able to approach God. That's what he did. Somebody who had no right, according to the law, to go in and make a sacrifice. Yeshua touches him, cleans him. Now he can go. And that's why Yeshua said, go show yourself to the priest. Go show him that you're clean now. Now you can offer your sacrifice to God. Yeshua is still looking to do that. The woman with the issue of blood. Oh, no, 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 don't touch me, don't touch me. No, 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 The clean one who lives in the tabernacle comes out of the tabernacle and in a way was made himself available to become unclean because touching these people, touching the leper, having the woman with the blood touch him, made him unclean according to Torah. But he was willing to give up a, 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 a place of being clean, willing to give it up for those who are unclean, so they can go and give their sacrifice. Yeshua, to this day, is looking to touch lepers. Oh yeah, we touch lepers once. You know, we'll have like a, a leper outing. You know, we'll go to the backpacks for the homeless folks and spend a day with the homeless and come out really feeling really good. Until they're knocking on our door the next day. And then the next day, Thank you, Lou. Oh yeah, we'll deal with people that are all screw-ups. We'll deal with them, we'll pray for them until they come the next day and they're still screwed up. Oh yeah, then we'll pray for them again and then they're still screwed up. Then we start to...